Hi guys, today we will discuss about mobility strategy and how to design a good mobility strategy. Now why is it important? Because mobility strategy is like a backbone of every network. All of your KPIs, your throughput, all of that is impacted if you have a bad mobility strategy. So uh, this, there will be multiple sessions on that. Uh, today we will cover the idle mode mobility and in the next session we will cover a connected mode mobility and then we will see how we can combine them together and how they should be correlated so to get the most optimum mobility strategy and most optimum network experience so let's start with the idle mode first so uh, let's understand the premise first over here uh, the green circle the green layers they indicate one rat rat means radio access technology while the blue one indicates the second rat so uh, if we look at it from this perspective so um, if we want a 5g 4g mobility strategy then you can assume that this all the green cells here they belong to 5g network while the blue cell is an LTE cell if you are looking for a 4g and 3g mobility strategy for instance then you can assume that all these green ones are LTE cells while the blue one is a 3G or a 2G cell. So uh, basically uh, the idle mode mobility is similar in concept uh, for 5G and 4G. So uh, you can use this uh, knowledge on both the networks. So let's start from that perspective. Each of this over here is a different frequency. So in the, for in the current understanding, in the current example, this is our cell one, which is let's say on frequency one this is our cell 1 but on frequency 2 so they are two interfrequency cells so if we look at their priorities priority is 7 here as well and priority is 7 here as well so if a user needs to move from this cell to this cell what will happen is that once it is moving away into the cell edge over here it will do an interfrequency idle mode cell reselection now what are the parameters that govern this so for interfrequency it depends on s non intra search so this ue on this cell its rsrp or its coverage should be below s non intra search then it will start looking for other interfrequency options to move and if it finds out that this frequency 2 cell it is better uh, from this cell by a value of q hysteresis then it will move from this cell to this cell for instance if this value is minus 106 and this value is let's say 2 db so when the user on this cell is below 106 and this cell is above this cell by 2 db let's say 104 then the user will move from this cell to this cell so this is how uh, a simple reselection will work from uh, cell 1 uh, frequency 1 to cell 1 frequency 2 now once the user is over here and it moves further away let's say on this user, this cell edge then it needs to move from this frequency to this frequency now if you look here the difference here right now is priority this one is priority 7 but this one is priority 6 so this and this are different priorities and this one frequency 3 is on a lower priority so when you have a, a frequency which is on a lower priority then these uh, uh, parameters don't work anymore then we have a different set of parameters now again it will be interfrequency reselection but the parameters governing that would be threshold serving low and threshold x low now what does this mean this means that now we have two different parameters that need to be fulfilled for this move to ha to actually take place so this rsrp of this cell should be below threshold serving low while the rsrp of this cell should be above threshold x low only then the user will move from a higher priority frequency to a lower priority frequency now if the user moves from here to here because they are both the same frequency so they just need to fulfill the Q hysteresis they don't need to fulfill the S non intra search the non intra search is only for interfrequency because these two are same priority and same frequency so they are intra frequency so only if let's say the user moves here 
and this cell becomes better than this cell by the value of Q hysteresis. So let's say if Q hysteresis is 2 dB. So if this cell becomes better than this cell by 2 dB, the user will reselect from this cell to this cell. Remember all of this is in idle mode. So in idle mode when we move from one cell to another or one frequency to another, we call it reselection. In connected mode when we move, we call it handover. So that's why we are referring to all of this movement as reselection. So once the user is here, it's, let's say it keeps moving, moving and moving until it reaches over here, which is the cell edge of this frequency. And, and it will see that around this time, it has not seen any other um, cell on this frequency or on this rat as a whole, then it will need to move to another rat so the user actually can uh, keep the service. So for that one, we will do an IRAT reselection. For IRAT reselection, the parameters are similar as this one, but they can be defined separately on a different frequency. So again, the user on this one needs to be below threshold serving low, while the target rat should be above thresh X low. Now target rat here, if you're talking about 5G, 4G, then this is 5G, and the target rat over here is LTE. If you're talking about 4G, 3G, then this is 4G, then this target rat over here is 3G. So that is how you move from a higher priority frequency to a lower priority frequency. As you can see, this is priority 6, while over here this is priority 5. Now what will happen, let's say another user is moving from here on um, this frequency 4 rat 2 cell, and you see that it is here over and it's reached over here, then how will it go back to the higher priority rat? So for that one, we have IRAT reselection with thresh, thresh X high. So threshold X high is a one parameter only. So what it means is that uh, irrespective of whatever the value of coverage on this one is, it will move to the higher priority frequency or cell if this cell or this frequency is above threshold X high. Now, if the important thing to understand here is when you're moving from higher priority to lower priority, you need to fulfill two conditions. The This higher priority cell should be below thresh serving low and this lower priority cell should be above thresh X low. But while you're moving from lower priority to higher priority, then only one parameter needs to be fulfilled, which is thresh X high. Now, the important thing to understand here is that thresh X high should always have a value which is higher than the thresh serve low. Otherwise, we will have a ping pong. And I think that will be clear in the, in the next slide where we do an example. So, um, the user will move here. Similarly, if the user is here, it can actually move all the way back to this frequency because this is the highest priority. So, it can do thresh X high to this one. Similarly, if uh, let's say user moves from here towards inwards, the user can move from this frequency to this frequency as well based on thresh X high because this user, this priority is higher than this one. So a user over here on frequency 3 will see that frequency 2 is now above thresh X high. So irrespective of this coverage, it will move over there. Even though if you look here, user is within the cell center of this frequency, but if the frequency 2 is above thresh XI, it will move over there. But again, this thresh XI should be above or higher than this thresh serving low, otherwise you will have a ping pong. So let's understand this with an example. I think that because it is a complicated topic, with an example uh, you will be having a much better idea. So let's say if I move down from here and I say my S non-interest search is minus 106 and my Q hysteresis is 4 dB, then it means that when the user is over here and its RSRP goes below 106, let's say 107 dBm, and it finds out that this frequency 2 is above uh, this RSRP by 4 dB, that is minus 103, then it will move from this cell to this cell. So uh, let me um, let me repeat this, a user below at an RSRP of minus 107 dBm over here finds this cell with an RSRP of minus 103 dBm, it will move from here to here. Now from the movement from the high priority to low priority, let's look at it like this. 
if threshold serving low is minus 108 and thresh x low is minus 104 then what will happen is that if the user over here finds the RSRP of this cell is below minus 108 while this cell is above minus 104 it will move from here to here so if the user is finding out that RSRP over here is minus 109 and RSRP of this cell is minus 100 it will move but if the user finds out that RSRP of this cell is minus 109 but this cell is minus 105 it will not move because minus 105 is less than 104 right similarly if the user is moving away from here and it crosses here if this cell is at minus 100 and this cell becomes at minus 96 it will move over here during an intra frequency reselection so as we move over here and we reach at this point again if I say thresh serving low is minus 108 so what will happen that if RSRP here is minus 109 and the RSRP of this cell is minus 103 it will move from here to here if it is let's say 3G and this is 4G then this will be RSCP and this one will be RSRP so uh, th things can change according to the requirement of the rat but the concept will still say stay same so if I want to move from here to here what will happen I will do a IRAT reselection but it will be based on thresh x high now thresh x high I put the value of minus 104 that means whatever the RSRP here is, is it is not important as long as the frequency 3 cell 2 RSRP is above minus 104 the user will move from here to here now remember that this value should be higher than this value if I put a value of let's say minus 110 here then a user will move here at 110 but because thresh serving low of this over here is minus 108 so user will also meet this threshold because it is it moved at 110 and it is still less than 108 it will come back again thresh xi will meet it will go back over there again this thresh serve low will meet it will come back so if thresh x high is lower than thresh serving low you will have a ping pong between two layers which will impact your KPIs because every time you move between two different rats you need to do uh, signaling like tra like for instance uh, tracking area updates so uh, or routing area updates or, or location area updates so when you do that you will have to come up uh, connect to the network and in that case you will have signaling uh, signaling overflow right and uh, if you have a lot of signaling load then it would mean that uh, you will have l your low KPS because signaling uh, MO signaling um, RRC signaling is actually giving it actually gives uh, a much lower uh, success rate so your KPS will be impacted and you will have more signaling load anyways so it's not a good um, uh, mobility strategy you have to make sure that you don't have any ping pongs when you're making or designing your mobility strategy similarly if the user moves from here um, to here uh, or here to here again you have to do an RSRP based of thresh x high so whatever the RSRP here is is irrelevant as soon as this frequency's RSRP is above minus 104 the user will move to this frequency again this one should be higher than the thresh serve low of this frequency to, to make sure that you do not have ping pong between them so this is this is the basic concept when we talk about idle mode mobility you have to ensure that all of your parameters are uh, consistent and they are not showing any uh, ping pongs now uh, if you want to push load from one frequency to another you can simply do that uh, with these parameters as well so for instance if I want to push load from here to here what I can do I can reduce the uh, thresh x high so uh, what will happen if I make this minus 108 then more users will be able to move from this frequency to this frequency but if I make this 108 I should also reduce my thresh serving low so I should make this 110 similarly if I want to retain more load here more traffic here and less traffic here then I can actually reduce this right to minus 110 minus 112 so then more users will be retained here or 
I can actually reduce this and also increase this. So if I increase this to minus 100 and I reduce this to minus 112, then the users will only move from here to here when the user in RSRP here is low below minus 112 and the RSRP of this cell is above minus 100. So that makes it more difficult for users to move from here to here. So more load will be retained at this point. Right. Similarly, if I want to um, reduce my uh, or let's say expand uh, this coverage and reduce load on this rat, so I can actually reduce my thresh serving low. So I make this thresh serving low minus 114 for instance and from here I can make thresh x high at minus, one, minus 110 for instance. So users will quickly move from here to here while they will stay here for much longer and not move back to this lower uh, priority rat. So uh, dealing with these, uh, you can actually uh, push traffic uh, from one uh, frequency to another, from one rat to another using the idle mode uh, strategies or idle mode parameters. I hope this is clear. In the next session, we will discuss about connected mode mobility. And then one of the most important thing that I see most of the people doing it wrong, people design their idle mode strategy and they design their connected mode strategy but they do not synchronize them so what happens is that your connected mode strategy is doing something else while your idle mode strategy is doing something else so in the next session we will not only talk about the connected mode mobility strategy but we will also talk about how to make sure that your connected mode and your idle mode mobility strategies are synchronized and they are correlated that's very important for your network's kpis and your traffic management. So stay tuned. Until next time, bye-bye.